Hi there, I'm Deacon Ish, and I'd like to um, start a little time together just by reading you one verse from Psalm 29, and it's, it's verse 11. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. The first job I had after I left school about the age of 15 was as a farm labourer. Now, being a puny ex-school kid, I soon realised what little strength I actually had compared with the hardened old farmhands who I was working alongside. But I soon realised with a pitchfork, uh, when we're, uh, the trailer came along, you know, pitching the straw and hay bales onto the trailer, actually it, remind, it needed more skill than actual strength. But you know, when the big lorry came with all the artificial fertiliser in plastic sacks, now, putting those on your back was a bit of a challenge. But I did grow strong, and um, although I was getting strong strength-wise, I was also still quite insecure. There are very few people in the Bible who are physically as strong as Goliath of Gath. Now, Samson was strong, of course, but he was no giant. And he also was only strong when the Spirit of God was actually upon him. Goliath was strong all the time. He's the sort of guy you'd not want to upset or actually meet on a dark night. Ten and a half feet tall, his spearhead weighed nearly two stone, that's 25 pound. His armour weighed 14 stone, well, that's 200 pound. No wonder Saul and the Israelites were really afraid of him. Goliath was one of the last descendants of Raphaim, who lived, and he lived uh, in Gath. Although giants, the Raphaimites, were also different than others, as some had six fingers and some had six toes. So Goliath himself, although one of the strongest men in the world, he was a man with no homeland, no roots, and he came from a people, a tribe, which would soon be extinct. Now, what sort of occupation could Goliath choose? Well, not many, really. Um, to use his size and strength of the full, of course, he had to be some sort of soldier. But he could never be a normal soldier. Well, he could never be a normal anything. For some reason, the Philistines had not made him a commander. They not made him a general. Uh, no, the highest he was ever going to achieve in the army rankings was actually to be out front as a mascot. He was just a massive, strong fighting machine standing at the front of the army who every now and again would let out a roar to scare the enemy. In 1 Samuel 17, we see even the Bible was not impressed by him. He only gets a couple of lines of description, whilst we get nine to ten lines to describe his armour. But as we read on into the story of David and Goliath, we notice a very strange reaction from the giant from Gath. We read as he stared down at the approaching David, he saw a good-looking boy. He despised him. Why did he react so strongly to David? What did he hate him for? Why hate, you know, so much? Surely he had no reason to feel this way, or, or did he? Maybe it was because David was everything that he wasn't. Everything he never had been. And of course, everything he never would be. David was a normal, handsome boy, confident in himself, confident in his nation, and confident in his God. Goliath's only quality was his strength. And here he is, not even faced with a, a hero, a giant hero from the Israel army to fight. Even if he killed this young boy, it would be humiliating for him. He'd hardly look a hero. He would achieve no personal satisfaction in killing David. It was impossible for Goliath to win this battle, whatever the outcome. Do you know, I have a feeling this strong giant was really just a weak, rejected individual. Inside, 
And you know, he's now facing his giant. Goliath did not lose the battle when he lost his head. He lost the battle when he faced the boy David. We have learned how to act strong. We've even learned how to look strong and how to, to be really strong inside. But you know, there's always be times when we have to face people and our weaknesses and our hidden rejections actually begin to show. We all have our Davids to face and we all have different insecurities that actually need to be conquered. Our Bible verse says, the Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. I don't believe that true strength could be judged by the ability to lift a half ton dumbbell or knocking out a 10 foot giant and chopping off his head. True strength is when we find we are able to overcome our securities and this can only happen with God's help. Let's allow his power that is at work within us to take away our weaknesses and our insecurities. Let's allow his power to make us really strong. We will still keep facing our Davids, but with God's help, we never need to feel insecure as we actually do so.